Ever since Bleemsync 1.1 came out, I've had a ton of people commenting and PMing me, specifically asking for instructions on how to set up RetroArch on your Bleemsync 1.1 build. In this video, we're going to do exactly that. This is Steve from Rostalgia, and let's get started. All right, guys, so uh, we are ready to roll. Uh, in this video, we're going to assume that you've done a fresh install for Bleemsync 1.1, and I'm assuming that's why everybody's asking so many questions. I would have assumed that uh, Bleemsync 1.1 would have come with all of the cores ready to go, um, but they haven't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna walk you through the major things that you're gonna wanna do to be able to load games on there, to run whatever game you want, and to even do things like um, do thumbnails and playlists. So. What we need to do is we need to make sure that our build for BleemSync, our USB drive is plugged into our computer, which mine is, and I just need to pull it up here. So mine is right here where it says Sony. I'm gonna double click on it and you can see everything's in there. Uh, I don't have any other games loaded up onto here. This is literally a fresh install. Uh, nothing, nothing at all is on here. No additional games have been transferred onto it. It's pretty much just a fresh, clean slate, which is what I'm going to do this video based around. So we're gonna go ahead and minimize that because we don't need it right this second. Uh, what we're gonna do is navigate to our web browser and I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up here. So there's gonna be a few things that we need to download. The first thing that we're gonna wanna do is download all the cores and I will leave all the links in the description down below, but this is going to be our core page. We're also going to need to download uh, a few things like our database with the database-rdb.zip file. And what that's going to do is it's going to um, give the information to RetroArch so it knows which games belong with which console. And then we're also optionally going to download some uh, artwork. So this artwork is what's going to end up getting matched up with the games. So again, you need the database, you need the artwork. Uh, all those things are going to work together to build you those really nice playlists that have the images uh, and the information about the game. So uh, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and download all of the cores. So you can see in here, uh, all the cores are listed right up in here. So we're just going to click on the zip folder here. And inside of that, we've got something called all cores. So we're going to click on the all core zip. We're gonna go ahead and save that right to our desktop. That's gonna start downloading. It shouldn't take very long at all. And in fact, it's already finished. Uh, before we touch that, we're also gonna go ahead and download our database. So we're gonna to go to database-rdb.zip. We're gonna click on this. It's also gonna save right to our desktop. That's not very big either, 20 megabytes, so that's fine. And then for the sake of this video, because this is such a large file, I've pre-downloaded it. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna look at Super Nintendo. Um, but if you had other consoles, you can pretty much pick anything you want from here, all the way from Atari, right on down to some VTech um, consoles and things like that. So uh, in this case, I've gone ahead and you can see right here, I've already downloaded the Nintendo-Super Nintendo Entertainment System. So that is right over here. Uh, I've already pre-downloaded that and I've pre-extracted it. Uh, again, it's a very large file, so I didn't want to take forever in the video, um, but we're gonna go ahead and minimize our web browser now that we've got our three main components. So you can see the Nintendo files I've already transferred and unzipped here. I just need to move over my other files that we just downloaded from my other screen. So here's our all cores. We're gonna right click on this. We're gonna extract that to its own folder. It's gonna take a few seconds to do that. And then that's done. I'm just gonna move that file over. So that's right here too. Same thing with the database. We're gonna right click on it. We're gonna extract it to its own folder. And that should take just another second or so. And that's done. We're gonna transfer that over from my other screen. So now we've got our artwork. Okay, so when we double click on that, it's gonna have another folder in there. Within that, now we've got our uh, named underscore box art, named underscore snaps, and named underscore titles. And then obviously within each folder, it's gonna have all of our different uh, artwork. So everything's gonna be in there, loaded up and ready to go. Um, now what we need to do is we're going to open up our um, USB drive with our BleemSync build onto it. Uh, and what we're gonna need to do is follow this path. So we're gonna double click on BleemSync. Then we're gonna go to OPT. Then we're gonna go to RetroArch. Then we're gonna go to dot config. We're gonna go to RetroArch again. And in here is where we're going to start loading everything that we need. 
So first things first, we're going to transfer in our cores. So if we double click on cores, so you can see right away, the only thing in here is the PCSX rearmed core. What we need to do is we need to open up our cores folder that we've just extracted, and we're gonna go ahead and copy everything. And actually, I'm just gonna check to see if the PSP one is in here, because I don't think it is. I think we have to add the PSP one separately. Yeah, PSP is not in here, so I'll show you guys really quickly how to do that. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kick this over. We are gonna set this right here. We're gonna copy all of these cores into uh, that folder. And that should only take a few seconds or so. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, fast forward through this. Okay, now it's asking if we want to replace the PCS the PCSX rearmed core. Uh, in this case, we don't need to, we can skip that because we know that the core that would have been pre-installed is the most up-to-date core. Uh, so we're gonna skip that and we're good to go. So now everything is in here with the exception of PSP. So we can close this. If we open up our web browser again uh, and we go back to our uh, section where we've got access to all of the cores, there's a folder called special. If you open that up, you're gonna see there's a core for PSP. Uh, it's the core underscore PSC underscore PPSSPP. What we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna download this. We're gonna save it right to our desktop again. We're gonna minimize this and I'm gonna pull it over. So right over here. We're going to extract that. Again, that'll take just one second. I'm gonna copy that back over from my other screen. We're gonna double click on it. It's ready to just be copied right onto the root of our drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Just give me one second to figure this out. Okay, perfect. So we need to go back to the root of our drive, which is right here. All we need to do is click and drag this over. It's gonna copy in, it'll take a second or so, but that's pretty much it. Then PSP is going to be fully loaded up on there as well. So we're done with that step. Perfect. So we can go ahead and close this. Uh, next, we're gonna go through that same pathway again. So we're gonna go to BleemSync, OPT, RetroArc.config, RetroArc again. And then now we have our cores done. What we need to do is we need to do our database. So if we open up the database folder and we open up our DB, this is where we're gonna load up our databases. So we're just gonna open up this folder here and we're going to go ahead and copy everything and we're just gonna stick it all in here as well. So this is gonna be relatively quick. It's mostly um, text files essentially that have just databases in them. Awesome. So that's finished as well. We don't need that folder anymore. Next, we're gonna go back out. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep going back to the root of the drive to show you guys um, exactly the pathway just so that way nobody gets confused. Um, so now we've done our PSP core, we've done all of our other cores, we've done our databases, and now we just need to do our artwork. So we need to go to BloomSync, OPT, RetroArc.config, RetroArc again, and there's gonna be a folder called Thumbnails. We're gonna double click on that, and inside you can see in here we've got PlayStation Classic-External, PlayStation Classic-Internal. Uh, that's exactly where we're gonna to wanna to load our Super Nintendo folder. So we're gonna open this up, and you can see there's a folder called Nintendo-Super Nintendo Entertainment System. We're just gonna take it as is, and we're just gonna copy that directly into here. And now this is gonna take a little bit of time. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this as well. All right, so now that we're finished that, and uh, sorry that took a while, I, I always forget when you're transferring thousands of files, regardless of how small they are, it does take a while. So uh, that's been transferred over. So now you can see when you double click on this Nintendo folder, you've got your box art snaps and titles. Same with the internal games. Uh, if you were to click on this, it'll have your box arts right here, and then they're all listed there. So uh, we've got ourselves our uh, Nintendo artwork in here, we've got our databases loaded up, we've got all of our cores loaded up. The only thing that's left for us to do is to load up some games. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my ROMs folder that I have on my external drive, just so I have access to all my ROMs. And we are gonna be doing Super Nintendo. Just right here. And now I've got all of my games here. Uh, what I need to do is I'm going to go back out to the root of the USB drive. So it's right here. And what I like to do, a lot of people can put their their um, 
their games folder pretty much anywhere they want. I like to put mine right on the root of the drive just so it's easily accessible. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to just uh, open up a new folder on here. We're gonna call this RetroArch Games. And then within that folder, you would create subfolders. So if you're gonna be loading up Super Nintendo, create a folder called Super Nintendo. If you've got a Nintendo game that you wanna load up, create another folder called Nintendo and put your Nintendo games in a separate folder. And the reason why you wanna do that is just it keeps things organized and it prevents you from getting confused. Uh, a lot of games are released for multiple different consoles and you don't wanna get confused as to what game belongs to which console. So in this case, we are doing Super Nintendo. So I'm just gonna create an SNES folder and then all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag and drop a bunch of games on. Okay, so I've got 32 games selected. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy those over. And that should only take a few seconds. They're not very big files. All right, so that's finished and we're pretty much done. All you would do here is if you wanted, uh, oh, that didn't say for some reason, we're gonna call this S. NES, there we go. So if you wanted to add a bunch of other games, this is how you would do it, but pretty much that's it. We've got our databases loaded, artworks loaded, game is loaded, um, we're, all of our cores are there. We're pretty much ready to roll. So all we need to do is unplug our USB drive, pop it into our OTG adapter or into the front port of our PlayStation Classic and turn it on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll switch over to my PlayStation Classic right now. All right guys, so here we are on our boot menu for our RetroArch and BleemSync build for BleemSync 1.1. We're just gonna go ahead and finish setting up RetroArch. So we're gonna go ahead and go into RetroArch. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys that now the cores are loaded and we absolutely can play games. If we go to load content and we go to our directory here, what we're gonna to wanna to do is go down to our media folder we're going to go into our RetroArch games, we're going to go into SNES, and we're going to pick a game. Uh, once you do that, you'll see it automatically asks you which core you want to load. Uh, for this game, I'm just going to use the SNES 9X core, and I'm going to press that, and it should boot up no problem. And here it is. So we currently have the Adventures of Batman and Robin on screen, and it is absolutely working. Uh, there's no problems here whatsoever. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of that game. We're going to close the content and we're going to go back. So what we want to do is we want to set up a playlist. So as you can see here, we've got external and internal. Internal is going to show you all of the uh, games that were pre-installed on the PlayStation Classic along with their artwork. What we want to do is we want to create a playlist for all of the Super Nintendo games in which I've just, uh, I've just loaded onto my USB drive. And it's relatively simple. Right over here, you've got import content. You're going to want to scan directory. You're going to go and locate your directory, which is going to be within the media folder. Then you're going to go to RetroArch Games. Then you're going to go to SNES. And then you're going to scan this directory. And what it's going to do, you'll see along the bottom that it's scanning all the games. Uh, there's 32 games, so it doesn't take very long. It's scanning of directory is finished. So that is complete. Uh, obviously, the larger the game file and the more games, the longer this will take. So keep that in mind. Mine was relatively quickly, but if you've got 900 games, it's going to take quite a while to do that. And if you've got, you know, thousands of games because you've loaded up a bunch of different consoles, that's also going to take quite a bit of time. Uh, what I generally recommend is you can scan the main directory and it'll scan each folder. I generally recommend clicking on each individual folder and scanning that. It does take longer but it tends to be more accurate. Uh, and that's what I would recommend doing. So now that that's scanned, we're gonna go ahead and go back. And you'll see right away that there's now a new icon right over here for Super Nintendo. And then when we click on it, the artwork is automatically matched up and we now have everything that we need for these games. Uh, it's not perfect. There's probably, in the case that I've done, I don't think any of the games that I selected won't have artwork that show up. Um, but, oh, there we go, there's one. So uh, Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island, for whatever reason, the artwork did not show up and it may be because of the ROM name, how it's got in there, Revision 1, USA, comma, Asia. Those are little things that you have to tweak in terms of the name of the uh, ROM itself so that way it matches properly. But for the most part, it's pretty good. So as you can see, everything's in here. And of course, with the playlist, it makes things nice and easy. Uh, you go ahead and pick whatever game you want. Uh, 
What I also recommend doing is going ahead and adjusting the um, settings of each playlist because you can set it up to run automatically off of a specific core, which makes things faster. So you're gonna go into settings, you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna go into your playlists. Then you're gonna go ahead and scroll down and select the playlist you want. And you just have to choose by pressing the right and left arrow which ROM you want or which which core you want to automatically be loaded up with it. So in this case, you're gonna have to give it a second to move over, but this is loading up the SNES 9X 2002, 2005, 2010, and so what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're just gonna search through until we can find our SNES core. So here's the one that we want, the SNES 9X core. We're gonna go ahead and accept that. Then we're gonna go back and we're gonna go back again. And what you're gonna notice now is when we go to the core or when we go to the uh, the console and we select whatever game we want, it should automatically load up the core. So we're gonna actually go to a different game this time. Let's do Kirby's Dream Land. We're gonna hit run and it'll automatically associate that ROM with the correct core. It'll boot up correctly and you're ready pretty much to go right out of the gate. So that's pretty much it for that. That's how you set up RetroArch on your PlayStation Classic with your BleemSync 1.1 build. Uh, make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will talk to you guys again real soon.